I'm Dr. Teresa Bowling. The purpose of this video is to demonstrate an interscaling block and or catheter. The first thing we're going to discuss is the importance of positioning and how critical it is to achieve success. In the case of interscaling block, we place the patient in a samurai upright position on a stretcher in our block room. I place a folded towel underneath the patient's scapula to optimize positioning. And then I ask the patient to turn their head away from the side of the block. In this case, we're going to be doing a right side of the block. And you can see now this patient's field has markedly improved and gives me much better access to a posterior approach, which is our preferred approach for interscaling um, catheters. For an interscaling blocker catheter, we place the patient in the supine position with their arm adjacent to their side. We turn their head away from the side of the block, and the first thing we always do is identify the plexus in the supraclavicular view. This is our home base. And it's very reliable and it's always a great place to start and a great place to go if you get lost when you're looking for your interscaling and groove. We slowly rotate the probe in a cephalad direction until the interscaling groove comes into view. And you see the two bellies of the anterior scaling to the left and the medial scaling to the right. That's a very nice picture in this model and you can see she's very superficial, only about a half a centimeter to a centimeter below the level of the skin. So for this block, I'm going to use a 50 millimeter 21 gauge needle because I do not need a long needle because the plexus is so superficial. The needle approach is going to be very shallow, hugging the ultrasound probe. You're not going to have to go very deep at all. Once the needle is inserted, we typically inject deep to the plexus 15 mLs of half percent ropivacaine. Once we see good spread of local anesthetic, we withdraw the needle and then place it more superficially towards the superficial aspect of the plexus where we place another 15 mLs of half percent ropivacaine. Once all the local anesthetic is administered, we either remove the needle if it's a single shot block or we place a catheter. The pearl here is to not thread the catheter too far because you will have catheter failure. The tip of the catheter will be somewhere in the belly of one of the scaling muscles and not at the plexus where you need it to be. After we do place a catheter in these patients, we do inject air through the catheter to confirm catheter placement. And ideally, we try to coil the catheter around the plexus in order to optimize analgesia in the postoperative period. This ultrasound video shows the brachial plexus in the supraclavicular approach next to the subclavian artery. As we scan up the neck, you see the brachial plexus lining up in the interscaling groove in the typical red light, yellow light, green light formation in a north to south direction with the scalene muscles on either side. From the right, you're going to see a needle coming towards the plexus, and this is the local anesthesia being delivered for the subcutaneous infiltration. As we go forward, you see a needle coming in from the right to the left of the screen. It's a 17 gauge TUI needle, 4 inches long. We're going to be injecting 15 mLs of local anesthetic in this first location of half percent ropivacaine. You can see the tip of the needle lateral to the plexus, and you're going to see the pooling of local anesthetic. We typically do multiple injections around the plexus to optimize the spread of local anesthetic. As the needle comes in and out of plane, we, our assistant will start injecting local anesthetic, and you'll see the plexus begin to spread apart. As the black pool of local anesthetic surrounds the plexus, we know that we're going to have a very successful block here. We're going to deposit a third to a half of the local anesthetic in this location, watching the spread of local anesthetic, and then we're going to reinsert the needle in a more deeper location to bathe the lower aspect of the brachial plexus, and you can see at this point more local anesthetic being injected, and as we do this, the plexus lights up. We can then again reposition the needle once more, even deeper to the plexus, and this will be our final injection where we inject the final deposit of local anesthetic deep to the plexus. And as you, we do this, you see the plexus rise above, um, away from the subclavian artery.